Today on Nerd Out, unfrack it, an open source journey. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about a tool called unfrack it. It's created by drip drop. So let's get into it. And we're talking about an open source journey around that. So what is unfrack.it? It is a website. Uh, the, the problem on Cardano is that many UTXOs um, become bloated with many tokens, NFTs, etc. So all of the UTXO selection algorithms that were created by the scientists back in the day assumed only a single token, ADA. Um, so as such, a lot of that, that work has not yet been brought forward into the days where we have you know tokens sprayed everywhere. So this makes a lot of these UTXOs hard to spend because they're large. We have a 16 kilobyte limit on transaction space. So if you need too many of these big UTXOs to build your transaction, it, will, it won't will work and your wallet will fail and give you an error, then you have a bad user experience. Uh, there are some wallets like Eternal that have a token fragmentation in their settings and it, it helps combat this, this issue. Uh, most of the wallets that we have on Cardano right now leave the users stuck and un unable to make their transaction work. So what is Unfrack it? It uses the SIP30 connection to any wallet attached to the Unfrack it website to perform token defragmentation. So if you're using NAMI, if you're using Jira wallet, if you're using um, uh, Lace, if you're using any SIP30 compatible wallet, uh, you can go to the Unfrack it website and defragment that particular wallet. It started as a Hobby Project by Adam Dean and Lathieson. I'm not going to attempt his last name. Um, I did happen to be in the room when, when we were planning it all out, but I didn't do any work on actually building it. Uh, but I did acquire the domain name, so I did something. So if you get wallet errors on various DeFi websites, you can try this tool first. Um, it is free, free as in completely free. All the transactions you perform on this website are internal only reorganizations of your own wallet UTXOs. So there's there's no money, ADA, anything being sent externally to your wallet. Uh, Drip Drops gets nothing out of it other than maybe some brand recognition, marketing, stuff like that. So try this first. So I want to talk about the open source journey of this tool and other tools on Cardano because most, most things on Cardano benefit in some way, shape, or form from the idea of open source. Uh, as you know, Cardano itself is open source. So you can look at the, the Cardano node code. You can look at anything that um, Input Alpha Global has, has created. You can look at a lot of the things that other companies have created. So. The first piece of technology I want to talk about is the CSL, the Cardano Serialization li Library. This was created uh, way back in the day at Emergo. It's still used on many, many websites um, and tools and inside wallets today. So that's had a, an amazing impact on downstream projects. I believe it is also used inside of Unfrack It at Drip Drops. Um, that inspired DC Spark to create a, a library called uh, Cardano Multi-Platform Library. It does a lot of the same things. It's similar, similar arch architecture, but it's um, some things are more modern. And so I've taken a look at a lot of that code, even if it's not using using the code directly to inform things inside Noom Chain. So one of the things I've been building in the last week was uh, the ability to take a root key for a wallet and index all of the addresses um, in a high, defini high definition wallet manner to be able to query every address that a, a given wallet owns. So that's something I've added to, to Noom Chain is the key derivation stuff. Now, I didn't use the code directly, but I looked at this code to inform actually how to do it 
correctly inside of Noom Chain. So CML uses Rust as its primary language. Noom Chain uses Kotlin. And so there wasn't a whole lot of compatibilities there. But again, the fact that it's open source, it can inform other stuff. And then, of course, Noom Chain is downstream used by things like Noom Server, which is then used by the Noom platform and the artist portal and the mobile apps and everything like that. Um, there's also other open source things like Ogmios that gives you easy access to the low level mini protocols of the Cardano node. And then informed by that was a catalyst project called Cogmios, also at Noom. And that is used by Noom Chain to do a lot of that indexing and wallet stuff. So this is not the end of the journey. There could always be things that take one piece or any of these pieces and build on top of them to create new things and bring those new things into the world. So like at this point, you could not only use it in Noom server, Noom chain could also be used as some type of wallet backend if you wanted to for a new wallet. Just one example, you know, the technology from unfrack it at drip drops that could also be used um, inside Noom Chain, if we wanted to make sure that the Noom transactions built on the Artist Portal website are always leaving your wallet in a better, more defragmented state than they receive them. So there is a catalyst proposal for Unfrack it. Again, this was a started as a hobby project and a convenience tool. Um, it lacks documentation, it lacks some features, and it's not uh, been fully open source yet. Documentation is very important for, for getting something open source. You can check out the uh, Ideal Scale project below. Um, again, I probably won't be doing a lot of work myself on this, but I will be helping inform the, the team of Lath and Adam as they uh, flesh it out. Also, Doug is coming on board this particular project to give it a um, a new look and feel that will be a little less um, engineering U UI UX. So hopefully it'll look a little better once it's done. So I want to talk a little bit about open source philosophy. And the idea here is that open source code is a force multiplier. One thing that's open source can improve many things that are downstream. And this is not just talking about code. Uh, the whole philosophy of Cardano is kind of open source. Even if a project happens to be closed source, it can still inspire and make others realize that, oh, this is possible to do. Um, and every project, even if it's closed source, if it's on a blockchain, it's still quasi open source because it's still going to leave those fingerprints of what's possible and how they did it on the blockchain. So that diagram I showed earlier is not unique. Um, in fact, it's very highly simplified. There's a whole lot of other things uh, for every project I've done that, that pour into everything else. Um, and I take inspiration from all of the open source code and projects and closed source code projects on Cardano to inform everything I'm I'm building. Um, and I think others in Cardano do this as well. There's there's a lot of cross-pollination of, of thought on Cardano, and that leaves us in a very good state. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, languages that you're building in and compatibility are nice, but open source code is still <coughs> excuse me, useful even if it's not directly used in a project. So that code can be used as a template, that code can be used as uh, a technique. And so as you're looking at Catalyst projects, I want you to look for projects to support that you believe will be force multipliers. So think about what downstream projects might be benefit from a given proposal existing in the world. And that's the thought I wanna leave you with. Uh, and as always, nerd out. <laughs>